Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join us for Dearly Departed Round 26 predictions. We are looking at the Premier League. We are looking at the Dearly Departed and the games coming up this weekend. And things are getting a little bit more interesting at the bottom of the table um, as it pertains to Fulham. We thought it was a bit of a lost cause for three of the Dearly Departed a few weeks ago maybe for the last few months, but um, hope springs eternal. And we've got a big dearly departed derby further up the table between Leeds and Villa to talk about. Um, before we do that, let me just explain who the dearly departed are. I'm a championship YouTuber. Every season, three teams get promoted and I don't want to stop covering them. Not all the um, subscribers we build and all the friends we make. So we continue with just those teams to look at the Premier League landscape. We are talking, of course, Sheffield United, Aston Villa, Leeds, West Brom, Fulham. The um, teams that have got up and stayed up um, in the Premier League since I've been doing the whole YouTube business. Before we go into our four games uh, this round, we will say thank you to J Coyle, our fan sponsor. Dearly departed, also known as Ben, couldn't bear to lose us. You too can get involved over on Patreon if you want to support the channel. And we thank Jay greatly for his support right the way through the season. Fantastic. Let's have a look at this round of fixtures. Now, as ever, the Dearly Departed games are represented with the blue bell lit on the right-hand side. But as ever, I'll go through all of the fixtures and kind of how the weekend sort of pans out. Um, early game on uh, Saturday, should be a good one that, shouldn't it? Manchester City versus West Ham. Then the solitary three o'clock uh, Saturday kickoff as one in the IFU traditionalist is a dearly departed game. West Brom versus Brighton. Interesting. I hope it's not a death knell on West Brom's season. Then the big one, um, our two flag bearers, Leeds and Villa. Uh, fighting to both be in the top half of the table when the season ends. They play one another at 5.30 on Saturday. Should be brilliant, that one. Uh, Newcastle Wolves at 8 on Saturday. Then we're into the Sunday games. It is Palace and Fulham is our third dearly departed game. Big one there. Master and Apprentice, uh, Scott Parker and um, Roy Hodgson there. Uh, Leicester and Arsenal at midday also. Spurs Burnley at 2. Chelsea Man United at 4.30. Then... Our last dearly departed game is Sheffield United versus Liverpool, who are the champions, but they are on a losing streak. Um, and then a few days later, we've got Everton, Southampton. Don't ask me why that's been delayed quite so, but um, it has. Uh, let's go from the top downwards, and there's only one place to start. And that is Leeds United versus Aston Villa. I love this game. Uh, the reason I love this game is because um, one of my favourite games I've ever seen in my life was between Leeds and Aston Villa. And I dare say, people who subscribe to this channel, m a few people have said they found me from my match review of that game. It was like a week before Christmas in the 1890s, yes, like December the 20th, 2018 or something. And it was Villa 2, Leeds 3. And it was just the most fantastic game of football. Then, on we go. I was at the return game that I booked a ticket for expecting um, Leeds to possibly be getting promotion on that day of the season, but it didn't work out that way. Horrible Easter for Leeds. It turned out to be a dead rubber. <clears throat> Not without incident after um, Matt Click uh, put that goal in after the Villa player was down. I can't remember. Big scrap, red card. Bamford then got retrospectively banned and Bielsa let them walk the goal in. It's a nice rivalry built up between these two teams. Let's keep it friendly in the comments, um, of course. And then earlier in the season, quite the win for Leeds at Villa. And it was 3-0, wasn't it? Patrick Bamford scored a hat-trick. And that was at the start of the season, wasn't it? When Villa were really, um, literally won most of their opening games at that point. And I think the other thing I remember is Calvin Phillips did not play in that game. And obviously we'll get onto that subject as it pertains to this game. But 
Um, that might be uh, something for Leeds fans to look at. There's a potential Jack Grealish will not play in this game either. Anyway, that is the lay of the land. Have a look over at the table on the left-hand side. You have Villa in 8th on 36 points. And you have Leeds in 10th on 35 points. Villa have kind of been behind everybody all the way this season, haven't they? Literally the first game of the season was postponed because uh, of Manchester City's involvement in Europe and then some COVID issues. So they're still, well, they're two games behind Leeds. But you can see there is a viable top 10 challenge uh, for both these two teams. And look, put the rivalry between each other aside. With our dearly departed hats on, wouldn't it be great if they both finished in the top 10? Two teams that have been in the championship. Obviously, Villa two seasons back and Leeds only last season challenging in the upper half in the Premier League. OK, they're big, huge, traditionally big clubs, aren't they? We get that. But still, um, it's a hard old um, bridge to cross, isn't it? Um, and yeah, it won't have... Um, it won't have missed the gaze of probably most Leeds fans that a Leeds win would put them above a Villa or a Villa win would put them uh, four points clear of Leeds. That gap, actually I can't imagine that gap's been too much closer than that through the season, down to one point. Um, feels like Villa have sort of, you know, after that really good start, managed to sustain uh, top half um, for most of the season now, doesn't it? Right, let's talk personnel um, because... I think I read a couple of tweets from uh, Phil Hay and I think the sense is that for Leeds, no Rodrigo, no Phillips, but Lorente should be okay. So what I'm saying is it's probably not going to be too much different than the team there that beat Southampton 3-0 with um, Melier. Now, the issue here is that... Um, Villa will play one up top. So I don't suspect it would be the same shape. So let's assume, uh, as we can only try to do with Bielsa, that it'll actually be a 4-1-4-1, in which case Dallas will be left back, ailing right back, Lorente and Cooper, with Strauch in front of them. And then um, it would be Click and Roberts um, in the central midfield with Rafinha, Harrison wide and Bamford up top. That would be my estimation. So same personnel, but he often goes for the sort of three defender or three centre back essentially solution when he's going up against um, two strikers to stop them uh, being able to press him playing out from the back, doesn't he? Uh, so we'll see if that pans out. Obviously, the elephant in the room is Phillips, who's probably, well, I know people like who Rafinha is now, uh, let's say best or most influential or, or important. Rafinha is very good, but obviously the way Bielsa plays Phillips is vitally important. However, they won without him against Southampton and cast your mind back, uh, Leeds won without uh, Phillips in the corresponding game at Villa Park. So um, maybe some cause for optimism there for Leeds fans. For Villa... Um, Martinez, so I'm not sure about Matt Cash, whether he's going to be back or not. That unbalances them a little bit. Cons and Ming's target in the last game, McGinn, Louise. And then we get the issues, don't we? Um, obviously, Villa would really, really like Grealish to be back. That was the lineup last time. El Ghazi, Traore, Barkley at 10 and Watkins up top. And regardless of Grealish probably being Villa's best player... It's just um, the fact that Barkley been coming in for a little bit of criticism recently from uh, my chats with Villa fans on the channel and replying to videos and things of that nature. So it's one of those because you don't want to rush him back and for things to be worse. A funny quote from Bielsa today. He said he'd rather Grealish plays. He always wants to plan to go against uh, opponents having their best players and... Um, yeah, uh, Grealish would certainly um, would certainly fill that um, criteria. However, um, I think you would I think you'd make Leeds strong stronger favourites if they are indeed favourites um, without Grealish than than with. 
So um, I guess we have to go to prediction time now, don't we? If you look at the recent games, uh, Leeds have beaten Newcastle, Leicester, Palace and Southampton, um, who other than Leicester are all below them in the table. They've lost to Wolves, Arsenal and Everton. Uh, Villa have beaten Newcastle, Southampton, Arsenal and lost to Leicester, West Ham and Burnley with a draw against Brighton. In there, the two teams feel ev very evenly matched, don't they, at this at this stage? And you could argue that, um, I don't know, is taking Grealish out of Villa equivalent to taking Phillips out of Leeds? And then what have both teams got behind there? Because there's still Rafinha in that Leeds team and Bamford scoring really well, isn't there? Whereas Villa without Grealish, Barkley not playing as well, um, maybe as a Rafinha is, and... Watkins um, having a good season, but uh, Bamford's really at the races, isn't he? Uh, you would argue that Villa defensively are pretty good, aren't they? If they can get cash back in there, again, I don't know the status there. Um, it's on a knife edge, isn't it? Really, really difficult one to call this. Um, Leeds don't draw many, do they? It tends to be a little bit all or nothing. I think without Grealish, I would I would back Leeds. With Grealish, I'm right on a knife edge, honestly. Um, I'm going to go for Leeds in this one. Now, remember, I'm doing the dearly departed here, so please don't get upset at me, Villa fans. I'm just judging it as I see it at the moment, and I will happily come on here if I'm wrong and say I got that one wrong, as I do every single week, pretty much. Uh, but I don't know why. I, just, I think I've just got a small hankering for Leeds, especially after the win against Southampton. Um, but I think I had Villa in the return game and Leeds won 3-0, so um, shows how much I know anyway. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Really, really interesting um, matchup, these two. These two clubs. Feels like there's a bit of a synergy between the two. Big clubs, championship, up. You know, a little bit, little bit of needle, a little bit of rivalry. Um, and please, God, we had some ridiculous childish arguing, shouting, screaming, fighting in the comments. Please respect each club. I'm sitting here in the middle. I'm an Ipswich fan, as you can see. They're both great clubs. Um, enjoy the rivalry. Enjoy the game. And if anything um, really big happens, um, I'll be doing a Saturday Super Stream, but I will jump in and do a review straight after the game. If not, I'll review it uh, for Sunday morning. But get your predictions in. The rivalry continues. Leeds versus Aston Villa in the dearly departed Classico, I think we can start to call it. Up next, a game that's taken on a bit of extra significance here. Crystal Palace versus Fulham. Roy Hodgson versus Scott Parker. Earlier in the season, this was a bit of a squash, wasn't it? And I think Palace turned up and won quite easily by... Maybe 3-1 or something of that nature. However, because of recent results, this is a very meaningful game for Fulham because they are now only three points away from Newcastle. Having looked pretty dead and buried for a while, with me coming on here week after week saying, Fulham keep drawing, Fulham keep drawing, they're not winning enough games. Well, have a look at those last few games. Just the one defeat in there against Leicester City. Yes, there's still a load of draws. But in the last four games, Fulham have scored eight points. In the same time, Newcastle have only scored three points. And that gap has closed right up. If you look at Palace, they're ten points ahead. They look much, much safer. They've got nine points in the last five games. And they had that very, very late... Um, win at Brighton earlier in the week. So does that soften this and make it a bit of an easier task for um, Fulham? I don't know. I don't know. Um, there is the team that uh, played for Fulham last time out. Ariola, Ina, Anderson, Adrabio and Robinson. Reed and Anguisa. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cavaliero, Loftus-Cheek, Lookman and Madger there. And it seems Scott Parker is really really happy with the shape. 
with the newly done back four, double pivot with a bit of tackling ability and um, and Greece's ball carrying ability, um, bit pace wide and then Loftus Sheets quality in the middle. And Madja seems to have the nod up top, doesn't he? So um, I suspect we'll see something very very similar. Obviously, it's Palace, it's Hodgson. Um, you can play against Roy Hodgson and think you've had a good game and come away losing it because uh, they'll sit in, not make it fun. And with one of their few chances, um, it will be conceived in such a way that it will be a big chance and um, you can go home with no points. Of recent times, Palace have beaten Brighton, they've beaten Newcastle and they've beaten Wolves. So... Maybe uh, punishing teams who are out of sorts, although Brighton are in good form going into that game. So, um, look, the big picture is that a Fulham win, potentially, looking at that goal difference, could send them out of the bottom three. And for the longest time now, we've had three of our five dearly departed teams in the bottom three. So I'm, I'm going to not take my own advice here and go more in hope than expectation and maybe not entirely leave my bias at the door and suggest that I would quite like to see a Fulham victory um, in this one. Will it happen? Well, there's um, there's potential for it. They're in um, sort of decent nick. So why not? Let's do it. Let's say uh, Fulham to win at Palace. If anyone can make a more sensible argument than me just being hopeful in the comments, then please do so. Um, and potentially they could exit the bottom three if other results go that way. I'm possibly getting ahead of myself here, but hey, with um, the bottom three being the same for what seems like about 20 shows now, um, I would be all over that. Get your thoughts in via the comments. Palace versus Fulham. Uh, West Brom versus Brighton. And does have the feeling of a bit of a last stand, um, this one, doesn't it? Because, I mean, take Newcastle and Fulham out of the equation in 17th and 18th. If Brighton were to beat West Brom here, they would be 15 points ahead of them with uh, 12 games to go. And it, it you know, you, you, you're really starting to get into the um, miracle territory. Uh, West Brom, last time out, they drew nil-nil at Burnley and they had chances. It's almost like they're just becoming a, competitive sort of outfit a little bit too late aren't they uh, have a look at the table West Brom are 11 points off safety um, Big Sam got his first clean sheet against Burnley Ajayi got sent off and they had the chances to win that game with um, Diania. I think Pereira had one headed off the line as well oh dearie me should have been the three points shouldn't it and against Manchester United Diania who is a nuisance up top there, could have had more than the one goal that he did get in that game. As I said about the clean sheet, Big Sam will be um, really, really pleased with that because he was talking about being hard to beat, competitive, um, getting to points parity, which is probably going to be not happening this season, but you could still stay up with under 38 points. And um, just the sense of competition... Um, it is picking up slightly and it looks like he's got his team now. Johnston, uh, Townsend, Furlong. Ajay will obviously be suspended um, and uh, Bartley, I don't know who we're partnering with, maybe um, O'Shea. I think is Ivanovic out of favour? He's still there. Uh, Yokuslu has played in the last couple of games. So have Gallagher and Maitland-Niles. You've got Phillips, Pereira. You could also put a Snodgrass in there. Deanne Garner, I don't know if he's out of favour as well. Uh, Diania up top certainly seems to be the go-to guy for a bit of physicality and some goal threat and obviously did score against Manchester United, didn't he? In terms of Brighton, I mean, they've been all across the press this week and triggering those people that want to sort of scream into the sky about XG. Um, just for my 10 seconds on this, I just find it bizarre. I think they're, I think they're like the people that when Love Island comes on each... Um, each year they tweet about a TV show that they have no intention of watching and are not going to watch and they tweet that they're not watching it and it's kind of like so shrug 
And it's like all these people with XG. I don't want to read XG, blah, blah, blah. Don't read it then. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just, uh, but anyway, the XG debate with Brighton is that they've been criminally underperforming their XG, i.e. they've been creating um, a lot of good goal-scoring openings and maybe not taking their chances. Ergo, they could have plenty more points, had they. Um, and that was none more um, obvious in that game against Palace where they lost very, very late on. So it's only one goal in the last three games. However, prior to that, they had wins over Leeds, Tottenham and Liverpool. So they're a good side, aren't they? I suspect this one will be fairly tight. And um, what does the draw count say? Brighton like a draw, don't they? Yeah. Um, 11 draws for Brighton, 8 for West Brom. And I think part of the dearly departed, the bottom three struggling, has been an inability to beat Brighton and Burnley. I think there's been a fair amount of draws in all of these games. And with that being said, I suspect there'll probably be another. Brighton have been quite good at against rivals, just, OK, we're not going to lose and not losing. And if the um, XG pattern continues, then they're not taking their chances in front of goal. But hey... Neither did West Brom in the last two games against Burnley or Manchester United. So I'm going to go for a draw. You let me know what you um, think. Don't worry about responding about XG. We, we don't need to hear it. Use it if you want. If you don't want to use it, fine. But you don't have to, don't have to technically say I'm going on about it. Now, it'd be like um, if I didn't like Chinese takeaway, me tweeting every day. I'm not eating Chinese takeaway today. I didn't yesterday either and I won't tomorrow. Because we want to have fish and chips. Who cares? Anyway, let's move on um, and get your comments in on West Brom versus Brighton. I've gone for a draw. Sheffield United versus Liverpool. Now, we would have been quaking in our boots here a few, well, month ago, month and a half ago with Liverpool. But um, everything seems to have come to a grinding, crashing halt for champions Liverpool after we waited all of that time for a league title they've won one and now they've gone on a losing streak in their title defence season at the same time as Manchester City have gone on a enormous winning streak as well so what I'm saying is for Blades it's less of an issue than maybe it would have been but still not going to be easy is it um, and it's three straight defeats for Sheffield United and they lost to a bottom three rival in a dearly departed derby against Fulham uh, this past week, didn't they? I know a lot of Blades commenters, not very impressed with that uh, penalty uh, shout at the end of that game, but we will move on from that one, won't we? So Liverpool are in sixth um, with the four straight defeats on the board. You can see on the right there to Brighton, Manchester City, Leicester, and Everton, I suppose the outlier there is Brighton. They're much further down in the table than all of the rest of the teams that have managed to beat Jurgen Klopp. A couple of decent wins before that against West Ham and against uh, Spurs. Weird home defeat against Burnley as well. And Sheffield United had picked up and won six in nine. And then they lose to Sheffield United and West Ham. And then you go to that Fulham game and you're like, right, this is the acid test. This game tells us who's got a better chance, if anybody at all, of any of the bottom three teams staying up and Fulham go and get the win. I just wonder whether um, that's going to kill off Sheffield United a little bit. I know we've been uh, projecting their demise for a long while, given how many games it was through the start of the season where they just could not get a win. That was the team that played against um, Fulham. And to be fair, um, they're still... Um, low on numbers, aren't they? Ramsdale in goal. Brian Jagielka and Ampadu are the three centre-backs. So the fabled um, Egan O'Connell and Basham uh, three centre-halves completely, none of them in there, although Basham is in central midfield, but he went off injured. Lundstrom, Fleck there. Stevens and Bulldog are back. Uh, McBurney and Sharp, I think, in terms of Sharp, while they're just going with his experience in a, in a bad point. Um, I mean, can we forecast that Liverpool's four-game losing streak means that Sheffield United can beat them. I don't know if we can, given the um, fragile sort of 
um, not confidence, but it feels like when Sheffield United take a knock in a game this season, they're just done, aren't they? And they they end up losing a tight game by by one goal, what whatever happens. So just not quite there for the entire season. Um, they they with a win uh, would tie up uh, West Brom on points with fourteen, but. We said for a while with Sheffield United, it's just a case of, right, get competitive, get above that horrible Derby County um, low watermark. But um, I I can't see them. I think we're going to get bounced back from Liverpool and I, I think we're going to get a Liverpool win, honestly, in this one. I would love to be proved wrong and I would love to hear your um, reasoned arguments as to why um, we might get a Blades win, but um, I'm going to predict a Liverpool win in this one. And that's our show. Uh, thank you, Jay, once again, Dearly Departed, also known as Ben. Couldn't bear to lose as Jay is our fan sponsor for the Dearly Departed shows. Um, I am filming this on Thursday. Actually, we'll try and get it out on Thursday night. So we're going a bit ahead of time uh, this week. Uh, tomorrow on the channel, which will be Friday, uh, we'll have the championship preview at one and we'll be watching along Forest and Derby. Then there'll be the Saturday Super Stream. And with that big Dearly Departed Derby at 5.30 on Saturday, if anything big should happen, I'll try and get a review out on Saturday night. But in all honesty, it will likely be Sunday morning we get that get that game reviewed. I know a lot of people like to catch up with their football on a Sunday and prefer it then. Anyway, plenty of stuff going on on the channel. And the next Dearly Departed show will be on Monday reviewing all of these games and hopefully some wins. We know we're going to get some points because we've got a dearly departed derby, but hopefully a win, two wins. God, two wins would be a nice thing, wouldn't it? It's been that type of season. Thank you, everybody, for watching. As always, I've plugged the, the Patreon. Please go and get involved over there. Twitter, at Benjamin Bloom, um, all of that good stuff. Subscribe on YouTube, ring the bell, tell you in the advert, merchandise, blah, blah, blah. And um, looking forward to a great weekend of Dearly Departed Football. Thank you for watching over and out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button. And to be notified every time we upload, ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I'll be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go and watch another video.